Hello, welcome to La Excellence. Welcome to our Why and How of Political Parties in India series. In this video, we are going to discuss on basics of political parties. In this video, we are going to understand what is a political party, what are the functions of political parties, what are the types of political parties, what type of political system or party system do we have in India. All these four components we are going to understand. Before defining what is a political party, let us think on few things. Every day we see and we hear about many parties. Not just in India, but all over the world, even if you take USA, UK, any country, even if it is communist country like China, we hear about parties. What is a political party? Generally, Political parties are associated with this phenomena known as democracy. Democracy brought in political parties. This is the theme. Earlier in the medieval era, in the non-democratic governments, do we have the representation? Here we means people. Do we have the representation? No. So in such systems, Political parties or political associations are not needed. Political parties or political associations are formed only under democracies. Here, the system allows for the formation of political groups or political parties. But then, democracy is again divided into two types. One is direct democracy where people themselves decide they don't need any representatives there is another type known as indirect democracy as the population under one country or one state or one political territory is increasing we cannot go for direct democracy in all circumstances in all regions at all times so we are following indirect democracy which promotes representative system representative system means we choose some people on behalf of us then they take the decisions these are known as representatives this system is known as representative system in representative system let us think this is one constituency another constituency another constituency like that we have at parliamentary level Lok Sabha constituencies Rajya Sabha constituencies, at the state level we have legislative assembly constituencies, legislative council wherever exists their constituencies. Let's say this is constituency 1, this is constituency 2, this is constituency 3. In this first constituency the person, the elected representative who wants to build a bridge that is the priority for that particular region. In here this particular region is prosperous and they want to go for some kind of digital infrastructure. This is a very poor region where this representative has promised to bring in drinking water. Here the priority is bringing drinking water. Here digital infrastructure. Here the infrastructure, physical infrastructure. Now let's say all these people are represented in parliament not under one group but individually from different constituencies do we have a national agenda when there is no association binding all of them can we have a national agenda or at this level if we take state can we have a state agenda individual agendas dominate without some kind of grouping that grouping, that cohesion is provided by the political party. Political parties, yes, they encourage different kinds of ideologies, different kinds of demands. But then they overall have some kind of agenda, political policy and program agenda would be there with the political party. Now we can understand that political party is a kind of association and this is represented by the people they form the political party they choose a particular person from a political party so it is an association political party 
is an association which has a political agenda a political program that is known as a political party such kind of political parties are common all over the world not just in india now to define political party technically we have election commission of india and election commission of india for that to work we have this act known as representation of peoples act now this act defines political parties how political parties are the associations and bodies which are registered as a political party under election commission of india that is the legal or the statutory definition of political party a political party is the one that is defined under section 29a of representation of peoples act with election commission these are political parties but you might have heard there are some political parties which are not registered they are not called political parties technically but they are just called associations political associations or political bodies so so in india political entities can be defined in three ways based on the contestants from where contestants are coming from contestants can be the independent candidates the independent candidates or these are general individuals and then we have second category known as political bodies and associations which are not registered just now we have seen the political bodies and associations that are registered under section 29a of representation of peoples act are only called political parties the unregistered political entities are known as just political bodies or associations now we have the registered parties registered with whom registered with election commission of india under representation of peoples act 1951 section 29 a of rpa under that a political party should be registered again these registered parties are divided into recognized parties non recognized parties once the party is registered it should contest in the polls once it contests in the polls based on its voting share based on the seats it wins political parties are again categorized as recognized and recognized under recognized we have national parties and state parties other parties which doesn't qualify in these two sets are known as unrecognized political parties in the next video we will be discussing what are these national parties what are these state parties but as of now we should understand that a political party is the one that is technically registered with the election commission of india under section 29a of rpa representation of peoples act 1951 okay we understood why political parties are necessary what is a political party why necessary because we need a coherent policy yes what are the functions of political parties what do they do there are two broad functions of political parties one political parties fill the political offices political parties by contesting their candidates they fill up the political offices like at the state level chief minister and his council of ministers at the national level prime minister and council of ministers these are all what political parties so they fill in the political parties and second they exercise the political power what is this political power political party exercising political power as either ruling party or opposition party these are the two major functions of political parties but then there are many dimensions to these functions let us understand each of them clearly the first major function of political parties is contesting the elections they contest the elections 
contesting the elections by fielding the candidates in the elections each party fields their own candidates they give their own mandate so by this way contesting elections is one of the functions in contesting elections political party chooses their candidates this candidates choosing can be of two types one the top leaders the party top leaders chooses the candidates or the members of the party the members of the party elects them these are two ways in india we are following this method the top leaders of a political party chooses a particular candidate that's why this is how the top leaders exercise the control over the party system how let's say we have congress party or bjp party the top leaders themselves they choose their candidates that's how candidates and the contestants they become loyal to the political party but there are some countries like usa where members of the party themselves they choose the candidates here top leaders chooses the candidates this is one function of the political parties contesting the elections the second function is putting forward the programs and policies now you might have observed many of the political parties they have announced their programs and policies if we come into the power we will do that this this is how they put in some programs and policies for example if you see now the minimum income support schemes what is this minimum income support scheme such schemes are announced by different political parties loan waivers are announced employment creating their ways employment generation has become one of the policy issue for the political parties this is how they put forward their programs and policies once if the party gets elected they implement them as ruling party if party loses in the election they ask the ruling party from the opposition side the opposition asks the political parties to fulfill their promises that are given during the election time the third function of political parties is if the party gets elected that party becomes ruling party once if the party gets elected and becomes ruling party that party plays major role in making laws as part of the executive they make laws and as part of the legislature legislature why are we saying political parties are part of legislature executive not because political parties themselves directly get represented but through their candidates they get represented their ideology gets represented so executive prepares the bill sends it to the legislature legislature passes it and after president of india's assent or governor's assent at the state level it becomes an act so making laws or making acts is also one of the important functions of political parties though ministers and mps or mlas are making the laws these are from where these are from political parties so their ideologies the political parties and their ideologies get represented let's say an mp wants to vote on negative side of the bill but then if the political party gives the whip what is this word whip whip means political party giving orders or mandates the members to vote in a particular way so this is how the ideology of political parties get reflected in the acts or the laws made by the ruling party the next very important function of political party is as opposition party for any healthy democracy strong opposition party is necessary when we have strong opposition then ruling party would be accountable to the people otherwise if there is no strong opposition party there won't be anyone who seek accountability from them because people will vote only at the time of the elections who will seek the accountability it is the parliament through the opposition party 
so political parties as opposition party plays very very important role in the democracy to seek the accountability from the government or from the ruling party that's why you might have observed there is very important role for the opposition party leaders also in appointments of various statutory bodies we have the role of opposition party opposition party members and in various committees parliamentary standing committees in various kinds of committees we have the role of opposition parties so as opposition party political parties play important role and the next important function of political party is to gathering public opinion how how gathering public opinion is a function of political party after demonetization what have we observed all the political parties especially the opposition parties gathered and they try to gather the public opinion about the policies about what people are asking for so public opinion gathering is one of the uh, in fact it is one of the core functions of political parties based on this public opinion only they try to provide the mandate mandate or they try to po- provide their manifestos election manifestos and they gather they organize various movements for example agrarian crisis for agrarian crisis you might have seen many of the opposition parties sided with the farmers and has asked the government to take some measures this is how political parties play very very important role in the democracy in fact democracy can withstand various forces only through political parties then the question is how many political parties should we have so these are all the functions understood we understood the necessity of political parties also then how many parties should we have we approximately have in india 2000 plus political parties how many number of political parties should we have that's the question there are different types of party systems these party systems are in general classified into three ways one is single party dominant system which means single party dominance in the entire political system would be there single party system there are some communist countries like china cuba in such countries only one single party is allowed technically through their constitution itself so such political party system is known as single party system or one party system the second type of party system is two party dominant system in the two party dominant system two political parties two major political parties exist that doesn't mean other parties won't be there other parties would be there but the political power political rule would be there only with these two political parties let's say in one term this political party known as a comes into power the next term either a or b these two parties only power changes there would be some party c d etc but their chances of forming a government would be very very less either they they support this party or this party that's how they play the role in the political system this kind of two party system is present in usa in uk in usa we have republicans and democrats in uk we have labor party conservative party though we have some smaller parties but these are two important parties that alternatively takes the power so that's why these two countries are known as two party systems the third type of political party system is multi party system wherein multiple parties have the chance of forming the government multi party system means let's say party a party b party c like that there are multiple parties more than two parties they all have the fair chances of forming the government when such case, when there is such case then we call that political system as multi party system india is example for this multi party system though over a period of time we evolved from a single party system 
our constitution allows for multiple party system but then initially after independence congress played very important role or the major party role both at the central and state the state level so we had effectively single party system but not constitutionally over a period of time multiple parties came into the picture now we have multi party system in letter and spirit so what is the system that we are following we are following multi party system why multi party system some criticize this is a bad system some say it is a good system why what are the positives of the multi party system for india what are the negatives for multi party system in india what are the positives we have diverse population diverse population in terms of regions in terms of languages in terms of religions so these diverse population and their aspirations and their demands need to be met differently so they have their own political associations formed as political parties their own aspirations their own demands for that they have their own political parties so multi party system is good because it is allowing power sharing power sharing in the country if there is one single party imagine a country with huge diversity like india if there is power sharing is not there among different communities among different religions among different languages among different regions what happens civil war happens as we have proper power sharing through the multi party system we are averting such things yes what are the other positives of the multi party system in india majoritarianism can be avoided what is this majoritarianism let's say if one political party is in power or two are in power then they form majority groups and minorities would be left out they won't have any say but as we are allowing multiple parties this kind of majoritarianism is less possibility so minorities would be protected then these are the positives then what are the negatives why some say this kind of multi party system is bad because when there are multiple par- parties competitive populism would take place what is this meaning of competitive populism multiple parties and one single constituency so as there is huge competition when we have huge number of parties they try to be populist we will f- give you free fan free tv something like that competitive populism would be there in case of multi party system there won't be stability if the government is formed using the coalition through the coalition of multiple parties then stability won't be there some let's say this is the coalition where we have right wing party left wing party let's say some parties are formed a coalition and form the government there won't be any stability stability would be an issue the powerful party won't be there because everyone is there but then that is one of the negatives that can be seen as positives also because of the diversity within the government there would be checks within the government that's how multi party system suits india yes there are negatives but that can be minimized because we don't have the alternative if we have two party system or one single party system we will suffer with civil war or some kind of disturbance as we are accommodating all kinds of views using different political parties we are able to sustain such diversity so for our country peculiarly we need multi party system and remember one thing there is a famous saying that political parties are not chosen political party system is evolved over a period of time based on the local economy based on the political situation based on the prevailing society political party system gets evolved over a period of time we will not be choosing it 
though we may write it in the constitution we may put it in the statute statutes political party systems are evolved over a period of time for our country multi party system is the evolved one that is the chosen one also here there are two important words alliance and coalition what is the difference between these two what is called alliance what is called coalition here alliance is also known as front this is the political formation before the elections before the announcement of results or before forming the government before the elections before the elections political parties come together they form a front you might have heard third front federal front what are all these before the elections some political parties like minded parties come together and they contest the elections collectively these are known as federal front or third front these are examples these are the names alliance or front is the one that is formed by various political parties before the election then what is coalition coalition is also a group of parties but after the elections after the announcement of results if no single party gets the majority multiple parties try to come together and form the government that is known as coalition in india's history we have many coalition parties many coalition governments after 1980s before that also we had few but after 1980s our political system was majorly dominated by the coalition politics and coalition governments that is the difference between alliance and coalition these are some of the basic concepts with regard to political parties in the next part let us understand what are the national parties what are state parties how they are categorized how we recognize them in india